time it is It's a comeback I'm the comeback, comeback king I am instant, is it nothing? If you're going to go and do something You better make it sting Cause I'm the comeback king Get you down on the floor, they're gonna keep it They just kick you some more and treat you like spit Cause when you reach for the door, they're gonna close it You're a beautiful soul, but no one knows it It's true, we all have sadness and moments that we lost is when we must look inwards Show them who is boss I'm the comeback, comeback king I am missing, missing nothing If you're going to, go into swing You better make it sting Cause I'm the comeback king I'm the comeback, comeback king Young disciple, legend talking, DB rivals. Royal blueprint, activating this ruthless. On the comeback, overcoming the combat. When expected to lose, and then you rise last. After the aftermath, swinging pitches that new class. Turn the lights on, cameras out, guess who's back? The lost boy been redefined, divine aligned. Intertwined through soul and mind, a perfect time. Through the chief musician, this is a freedom find. Keep them stance, a pioneer, alliance back. On the path, we're all welcome. Let's see a glass. I'm the comeback, comeback king. I am missing, missing nothing. If you're going to, going to swing. You better make it sting. Cause I'm in the comeback king. I'm the comeback, comeback king. We won't give up, you know. Know what I mean. When I'm gone, send a scene. Like a blank sheet, you can never count me out. Just what we all have nothing. You break your back on the job. Just try to fit in. You see these people around, they're always smiling. So when you turn your back, they can't get violent. Yeah, you said your life feeling a misfit. You try to get your voice out, they missed it. Instead of keep dropping the bomb without the fuse lit. They offer you breaks to make you commit sin. They place a film around your name to cause distraction. They send your chances to advance is a mission. But they will never catch me down, so keep on fishing. It's true, we all have sadness. And moments that we lost Is when we must look inwards Show them who is boss I'm the comeback, comeback king I ain't missing, missing nothing If it's going to, going to swing You better make it sting Cause I'm the comeback king I'm the comeback, comeback king Go back. 
back home with the rage of the cage, white heavy. Fly baby, stand the fuck up! Being brought out by D Link, Lamont Stafford. The way in, knocking shit out, and I don't want to leave you late. Train for three months, but I don't really need the training. I don't say shit, cause I can see you in the cage. Fly baby, yeah, I came out the red bud. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Aftermath. I'm your host, Cool Breeze, Justin Christie, along with my tag team partner, James El Papi Chulo. I'll point the right direction next time. What's going on, El Papi Chulo? How are you doing today? I'm good, man. What's up? Oh, man, I am... I'm I'm excited. Like, this was a great card, man. This is going to be a great wow. show tonight. Uh, we've got... Uh, we got Baylor Thomason with us tonight. We got Zevin Hunt with us tonight. We got uh, Tyson Swisher Sweet Southern with us tonight. Uh, we're also going to have Will Dickey, the new Rage in the Cage, 205-pound uh, light heavyweight champion, going to be with us uh, sometime after 7 tonight. Uh, Clifton Barnes is going to be returning with his uh, uh, Fight House Rage review. So that, I'm looking forward to that, man. This is going to be a hell of a damn show. We need a weather report from him. <laughs> Clifton, how's the weather? It's cold, motherfucker. Oh <laughs> uh, no, he's going to be doing a lot more than a weather report tonight. So he 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 did a a, a hell of a job getting uh you know some interviews with some fighters backstage, uh, kind of getting the feel of the 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 rage in the cage eighty six uh you know atmosphere and uh, you know getting a perspective of how that event went down. But uh, you know you were there you got to uh you know sit front row to that and kind of be backstage and yeah. do all kinds of stuff with that well how how did you like the event what was your overall take over everything 
man, it's like every rage card. It was better than the last one. It, it is unreal how I can say that and not be lying. You know, like mm-hmm. every card is better than the last. And it's a lot of the same guys, you know, that, that fight, maybe not the last card, but the card before that. And, uh, it, uh, it was, it was lit. It was crazy. Uh, I remember, uh, the uh, Zevin and Cody fight. You had one side screaming, uh, let's cheese. go cheese. And the other was warship. And let's then they go started warship. Yeah. Yeah, it was let's go cheese and let's go warship and uh, like if, if there was if there was ever like a uh, you know a boomer sooner versus you know, you know hook em horns moment that was it right there exactly right you there know, it, it was, was so loud it uh, was great I know they couldn't hear any anything I I was listening to Tom yell at Cody and I was right behind him and I couldn't hear him so. Uh, I know Cody couldn't hear him in the cage, but uh, yeah, there was, was so much energy in that that arena. It was it was it insane. Was. It was it was it was nice, and in every fight, or every, each match was a fight. I mean, it, it was there was no uh, lame fight. There was a, or what do they call it? A concession stand fight. There was right. one. So no, uh, I, I really enjoyed this card. So. I, I would say that uh, you know there, there there's no uh, there was no bad fights whatsoever, no. but uh, if if you had to go to the concession stands at any point, uh, there there were there was a little st- uh, stretch where there was like five decisions in a row, uh, right. w- with the three kickboxing matches and I think the two MMA fights right before that, but uh, other than that, I mean it was just action packed nonstop finish after finish after finish after finish. Yes. Uh, we had some highlight reel knockouts. We had, uh, Dude, you know, back choke to out. back. Back to back. Yeah, it was it was insane. It was it was yeah. insane. No, it wasn't back to back. They split them up. There was a it was a Baylor, then Zevin, then Tyson. So okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zevin Zevin had that bloodbath finish with those devastating elbows. Man, that was. Yeah. I, I saw the gash on Cody's forehead after the, after the match and how swollen his head was. Man, it was sick. But yeah, uh, you know, you talk, about, yeah, you want to talk about some yeah. some amazing elbow work. I mean, you know that Zevin was definitely waiting, uh, you know, chomping at the bit per se, uh, to get to use some elbows in MMA, and and you could tell like he was excited to get to use them. We'll we'll hear yeah. from him and his perspective about that here in just a little bit. Um, I I released my uh, cool brew picks for you know submission of the night, uh, fight of the night, and knockout of the night, uh yesterday or, or the day before yesterday uh you know there i haven't had anybody uh you know contradict me on that what what would you say were would be your picks i think submission of the night would go to uh who fought dylan that was daniel de la cruz that's who i had daniel to. de la cruz uh, yeah he, ch- he choked his guy out fast 20 seconds um, i think uh Knockout of the night, you have to go with both. I mean, it has to be a duel. Knockout of the night, you can't I was, I was one. really, I was really close. Like it was a toss up between Baylor's head kick knockout and Tyson's knee, but I chose uh, Tyson Southern for the knockout of the night, uh, and I chose Baylor Thomason versus Jonah Edwards as fight of the night because that went, uh. It, it went up to two minutes, 59 seconds of round number three. Right. So you, you got a finish in the very last second. If there was ever a fight where you got your full dollar amount for your ticket and your, right. your pay-per-view buy, you got your full dollar amount for that fight in that fight. They went the yes. distance and had a finish. If, if you I, go with that, I, I got to give it to you there. I, yeah, I think that, Tyson, that was my logic on that yeah. one. Yeah, that was. Both incredible knockouts, and and Tyson, mm-hmm. the way he did his, and, and it was uh, funny. We were in the back. Uh, I don't. I guess there was a wager on who would uh, who would, who would knock finish out. your fight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we thought we had the hundred dollars won, and then out of nowhere, boom, it happened, and we were like, wow. And it, it was mm-hmm. it was funny because Tyson had him in a choke, in a rear naked choke. Mm-hmm. And it looked like he like was getting it sunk in and then just stopped. Like he heard 
us talking in the back and got up. And, <laughs> He's like, no, and I'm going to get that $100. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and kudos to Two Feet stepping in. It's a tough dude, man. Early He's a very and, tough and guy went, making his return. It, it was a good fight, too, you know. So, uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, lots, lots of fights. Lo- I mean, lots of good fights. So Absolutely. Well, our first guest for the evening is going to be uh, Baylor One Shot Thomason. Uh, this is uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the aftermath show. It's very similar to what we do with the talk before the walk, except it's a little more casual. Um, I am going to try to uh, you know speed it up a little bit so we're not sitting here for like five hours because Lord knows you know you get us talking and just drinking and whatever we're doing we're gonna we're gonna talk for hours about what happened at Rage in the Cage, um, but you know we'll, we'll kind of keep it a little more brief and and you know kind of move our segments on a little bit so we can have enough time for for everybody. Uh, we're gonna get uh, Baylor one shot Thomason on real quick and uh, if you will welcome to Aftermath Baylor Thomason. How you How's doing Baylor? Guys? Doing good. Thank y'all for having me. Man, how how you feeling? You went through a three round war and got the finish, like we were just saying. Uh, g- give us a little bit of a uh, from your perspective. You know what your game plan was going into that fight, and then you know obviously what happened. You know with that finish. Um, the game plan. We didn't really have a game plan going into this fight. I try not to have a game plan going into any fight. Um. Just because usually if your game plan doesn't happen, I mean, what are you going to do next? You know, I kind of just go based off of what I know, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and then my striking starting to get better. And that obviously proved in this fight right here. So well-rounded, I'm comfortable everywhere. So going with a game plan, it's not going to happen just because I'm comfortable everywhere. So other than that, man, going those three rounds, I felt comfortable. I knew my cardio was good. I worked on my cardio a lot this fight camp. That's what I mainly focused on. I knew my technique was there. I knew everything was going to be there. My cardio was my main thing. I mean, if we would have won another three rounds or if that was a title fight, I would have been, it would have been perfect. It would have been perfect. But yeah, I knew in that third round, I saw him getting up off that stool and uh, I just saw the demeanor in his face and his hands started dropping and he started getting a little sluggish and I knew right there I needed to turn it up just a little bit more. That awesome. definitely makes a difference, man. Yeah. And, and you like w- w- being able to get a, a head kick knockout finish, w- like as deep as it gets into the third round for an amateur, uh, you know, that was incredibly impressive. You Thank know, you. A- a- as you know, you know, the physics of fighting, you yeah. know, the, the more you throw kicks, the, the, you know, the later on you get in the fight, the weaker your kicks will become, Yeah, you know, especially the higher you kick, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, just, kind of kind of weakens him up but you had such a powerful head kick that was able to land right underneath you know his ear and knock his equilibrium completely off kilter and just knock him out that was that was impressive man thank you thank you like like i was telling james a second ago you were actually up to that point candidate for knockout of the night and i ended up having to default it to fight of the night because of you know the criteria that you literally went the distance minus one second and finished that fight so yeah yeah, that that was that was incredibly impressive. I told awesome. you at the store when I seen you at the store. I'm the guy you you met at the yes, store. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> and uh, I, I met him at the. I didn't get to tell Justin, but I, I seen him at Love's on the way home. And uh, so, uh, but it scared us in the back. We thought he caught him on the way down. And now that I've watched it a couple of times, you did stop. You didn't. You didn't get him. And that's we were like, oh, he got the knockout. And then we were like, oh man, he he kicked him on the way down. Are they gonna? you know, yeah. DQ him for it or yeah, but uh, it was clean, man. You, that was yeah. A, yeah. A, a lot, a, was a lot of people, I think uh, what y'all didn't get to hear on that. Cause I kind of took out the audio in that edited video. Um, the, even the commentators were kind of questioning. I wish we had the ability for replay live in the events right now, but yeah. you know, it's still equipment we have yet, you know, the budget to purchase yet, uh, you know, but we will eventually. Um, but they were even questioning whether or not you kicked him while he was down. And yeah. I think this is a great opportunity to show that, uh, you know, you, you had, you landed, like, I think you landed a, a soft kick almost uh, on his way down and it was clean, as clean as it gets. I mean, that was like Vanderlei yeah. Silva all over again, <laughs> you know? It was, yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you the back exploded. Oh, I mean, oh, everybody I know, I know. was yelling, jumping around like, Oh my goodness. It was, it was wild. So yeah. I popped, I, I came out of my chair ringside and I'm just like, wow, I don't even know how I had a voice after that. Yeah. <laughs> it was 
And that's, that's, what's crazy is that we train, we train. So after that, after that roundhouse, we usually come back. And as soon as I load that roundhouse back, we'll come up with a knee. And as soon as he started falling, I noticed that he was already going down. And like, it was so hard not to finish going through with that knee. And it almost looked like I soccer kicked him yeah. pretty much. And it, I know it looked so bad, but I didn't mean it intentionally or nothing like that. Right. But it was just trained. And once I went for it, it was already progressed in my mind to go for it. And so it was just muscle memory to go ahead and hit that combo. So, so you're at, at Guto's? Uh, right Ghetto. Jiu -Jitsu? Yep, Ghetto, and then, Texas, BJJ. What you, where, what's your, your regular gym, your, your everyday uh, gym? Impact. Impact Martial impact. Arts is where I actually okay. train out of. And then I'll do my jiu-jitsu on um, a couple of days during the week over there at Ghetto. So you do your striking and everything at yeah. – at, uh, Okay, gotcha. Yep, at impact, that's what, I do my, well, when, that's where I do when, my striking. When I seen you were from Amarillo, I was like, how do I not know this kid? I, it's I, crazy. I, how, how do I? And, and you fought for Rage before. I, I've seen yeah. you fight. I just didn't realize you were from Amarillo. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's wild. But good. All right, job. I, we had I'm, a whole I'm table. Let, from I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag here. I think uh, James here is chomping at the bit to ask you a question. <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> no, it's no. almost like he's nervous to to start a, no, a, no, a I mean, you know, ask a girl out on a date or something. He's no, wanting to know if you no, have a manager. No. Um. I don't. I mean, I like to call my wife as my manager. She usually does everything for me. Um, but I do like I do have a manager. His name's Chasen. Um, he usually get um, gets my fights. Um, I'll text some of my fights, but usually I'll have him go ahead and go through everything, making sure that I'm ready for camp and stuff like that. Other than that, that that's who I got. That's cool. That's cool. Well, if there's ever a uh, uh... A change in any of that, but, or you're you're looking for anything? Yeah. James is interested with the firm sports management group. He, he's got his eye on it for sure, and he's Alrighty. right there in Amarillo. We add, we have add me we on have Facebook. Some... Add me on Facebook. We'll be friends and shoot me a message. Yeah. I'll shoot you a message. Absolutely. Yeah, we have, uh, and I'm sure a lot. I mean, you you go with roll with Cody ever when they're I've up rolled there? with him a couple of times before he had that fight and rage in the cage. I think last year. I don't yeah. remember. I think it was in February or March. It might have been later than that. But I did roll well, with him he, a couple of times and trained with him for about a month or two. I need if you're gonna be in there, he's got a title fight coming up. I need you to rough him up a little bit, you know. All righty. Nadia Alrighty. too. I Nadia, like it. We we manage we manage Nadia over there and uh can't remember who all else goes over and does their jujitsu there, but uh yeah, yeah, if you ever need somebody, I'll send you I'll shoot you a message. Awesome. Uh, you, you, dude, you were you. Uh, we had a whole table full of Amarillo people, and when they said Amarillo, man, everybody went crazy. They're like, "Oh, he's from Amarillo!" And yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Cool. Yeah, it's so, great. What did you expect a, a tough fight out of him? I mean, did you watch um, anything on him? I didn't expect him to be as strong as he was, because to be honest, um, whenever Summer sent me the message about fighting, because I had two people that had not. Dropped out my main guy that I was supposed to fight. He was out of Dallas, Texas, too, Delmore Pierce. And he had ended up getting a concussion. And then um, my first guy, I think, was Justin Miller. And he did – I guess he just didn't want to accept the fight. And then um, then we got this guy. And he was supposed to, I guess, fight at 125. And they couldn't find anybody at 125. So I didn't know if he had dropped weight or was going to drop weight to 125 or if he weighed 135 and was going to drop down. And so – I didn't know if he was dropping weight for this fight at 135, so I didn't know if his strength was going to be where it was or where it was going to be at, but it surprised me with his strength whenever he took me down. And so it surprised me, especially with that wrestling stuff. I had somebody come up to me in the back and tell me that he likes that pressure and he'll just duck his head and go in and try to take you down and use jujitsu. That's exactly what he did, just pressured, pressured, pressured up against the gate the whole time. So, well, I tell you, y'all were so fast. The, the fight before y'all, they were – I can't remember if they were 85ers or 70. I don't know. They were they, they were heavier they were, guys. 85. 85. They were they were slow compared to what y'all were. And and they yeah. weren't real slow, but when y'all so, got in there, y'all were so fast. Which, which is funny because that was the 22nd fight. Was it? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's hard to say they were slow. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> punch wise, like it was yeah. just so fast. I, I remember in the back, everybody was talking about the speed difference. And uh, yeah, so it, oh, yeah. It, was, it was 
it was awesome to see. It was the, that that kick, man. I'm telling you, everybody went crazy in the back. I I didn't get to see the fans in the stands. I'm sure they went. We could hear them, but the back, everybody was watching the monitors, and boom, just it's, lit up. It's so. the it's the one shot kick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's kind of like Shawn Michaels super kick, but yeah. you know better. Yeah, that 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 arena was electrified, man. Those fans are crazy. That's why I it, like fighting it, in Lawton a lot. I love Lawton, man. Those it was it was a and the fun support night. system that we have there. It's crazy. What, what's next for you? Right now, I'm resting right now. I'm resting right now. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping to shoot for June again, maybe the next Lawton one. So I'm hoping a couple of months out. I want to try to get three fights in this year, maybe four pushing it, but three for sure. That's what I want to try to get in this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, brother, we appreciate having you. Uh, awesome. Thank you we're, for having we're, me. Yeah, you know, we're we're gonna have to move on to our our next guest here in just a second, but uh, you know, great job, man. Uh, like Thank we said, uh, you kind of got our honors. Uh, I don't I don't have prizes yet. Uh, I need more sponsors to be able to give me you know get some prizes. We'll we'll uh, you know sponsor some uh, you know really cool stuff for fight of the night, submission night, stuff like that. But uh, I'm, I may end up having to do like back orders with you guys, and you know for everybody that I've picked in the past, I'll I'll get you guys some some cool uh, merch or memorabilia or something. Uh, awesome. but, uh, yeah, man, definitely fight of the night. Uh, you know, uh, number two on when it came to, uh, you know, knockout of the night only, only because I think, you know, fight of the wow. night fit better, but, uh, you know, you, you had a candidate for one hell of a fight for sure. It was, uh, absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you coming on the show, brother. Thank you. Thank y'all for having me, man. Hey, next right. time you're on, uh, or next time you have a fight, we'll get you on, uh, the talk before the walk and, and, you know, That'll get your face off with your opponent and, and. Show some uh, more highlights of you, hopefully. Awesome. Thank you all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for uh, Baylor One Shot Thomason. We appreciate you, brother. Have a good night, man. You too. Yes, sir. Man, that was, like I said, man, that was one hell of a fight, man. I uh, I can't even stress that enough. It was just, it was, it was super, all good fights. Super nice guy, too, man. I, I ran into him, like I said, at, at uh, uh, the loves truck stop in memphis texas on the way mm -hmm. back and uh he was super nice so oh yeah and you know amarillo guy so i, I could see how you I definitely know. get behind him for sure yeah, yeah i know you're a little yeah. you're a little biased on that uh, um i'm sorry i'm gonna try a new technique here real quick uh, i don't really want to cut for uh our break i'm kind of getting tired of doing that so i'm trying to See if this will work. We're going to see if we can play this video real quick. We're presenting yeah. Gangster Finance. I need my dancing in. All right. Uh, special shout out to our sponsor, uh, Gangster Finance, Alak Azul, uh, the Blue Drink OG, for sponsoring our show. Uh, you know, we, we really appreciate all the support. Without the you know the help with the sponsorships, we're not able to you know do these shows you know effectively and 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 you know with as good a quality as we're trying to do. Um, I'm 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 still a student of the game, so I'm still trying to learn. Uh, how to uh, you know make these videos better? I'm working with different programs and video editing and things like that, and seeing if I can do some live edits and learn our systems even better than you know what we've done. So you need to get me a background. Um, I can do that, but I need to get you a green screen first. Yeah, so we'll we'll get you like a big green curtain in the truck, and then uh, I think I I may be able to do that for you. I got. I, you know, I was going to put, well, I can't get this off here now, but I was going to put the, the old Kale King shirt behind me. Okay. But I didn't want to get it wrinkled. I love that shirt. It's so a good soft. Shirt. Yes. I, I'm, I'm sad that I haven't gotten one yet, but I got to like, I'm not going to like ask for, you know, free shit. Um, I had to uh, sell all them things. And it was crazy how fast they were flying. Oh, I'm sure. I was trying I'm to sure. watch the fights, keep people down from standing in front of other people, trying to get shirts, and oh yeah, they. 
Oh, absolutely. They love him some Lamont. So. Well, Lamont's definitely going to be back. Uh, we know that's for sure. Uh, yeah. I've been talking to him all day. You know, he's one of my my real good friends, as everybody knows, no secret. Um, so, like, obviously, we've been talking back and forth all day. And, you know, obviously, there's the heartbreak. You know, there's there's all that stuff when it comes to, you know, taking a, taking a loss. And, you know, it, it's one of those conversations you got to explain to people that, you know, you, you lost a fight that doesn't make you a loser. You know, right. it, it, it's it's how you, you know, take this experience and, and move forward from there. So it's a, you know, it, go ahead. It, it showed me a lot with Lamont that he, uh, and not everybody knows this story, but uh, he left without getting paid. And uh, I called him to tell him, you know, you were grabbing his check for him. And uh, he said he didn't care about the money. He, he wanted his belt back. Yeah. And uh, he, he didn't, didn't care. A lot of people think, oh, they just do it for the money and it's all about mm-hmm. the money and he, he could care less about that he he wanted his belt back so oh yeah uh yeah and, and i know he'll it. be back he, he'll be back he'll be better and for uh, the record he does have his check now i made sure that <laughs> i don't i don't want anybody to leave without getting their getting their pay right. for you know doing their stuff um yeah. but speaking of uh getting paid uh, we've got uh, you know, our next guest is new to the well, he's not, not new to the pay table per se, but he's new to getting a purse uh, for uh, his fights because he just made his professional debut successfully against uh, Cody Gallion, uh, who was also making his professional debut as well. So, I mean, it, it's a victory in, in you know, for both people in that sense. But uh, the winner of the fight, you know, Zevin Cheese Hunt, uh, did it in such an impressive fashion. Uh, those elbows were phenomenal. Um, like I was saying in our, the intro of our video, you can tell that Zevin has been chomping at the bit to be able to use elbows in MMA. And I, I was so impressed with his, his performance. Uh, and I, I, I'm talking way too much. I actually kind of want to hear from, from Zevin. Uh, so without further ado, uh, please help us welcome Zevin Cheese Hunt. Zevin, welcome to Aftermath, brother. How you doing? I'm doing good. Same old, same old. Doing real good now that I just get to eat bad and chill at home. <laughs> right? You actually get to eat cheese right now, huh? <laughs> I eat whatever I want. You know, yeah. what, <laughs> whole blocks of cheese. The whole wheel. Um, so, man, you, you're finally, like, we, we, we've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, I, I know they've been really hounding it in since you were what seven and oh eight and oh things like that. You know, Zevin, when are you gonna go pro? When are you gonna go pro? Well, we answered that question this past Saturday. You finally went pro. How does it feel? How does it feel to be uh, now you know with a, a an actual fight paycheck outside of ticket sales and uh, you know with with a fight purse and and your a record on the professionals? Uh, it feels good to be a pro. It's uh it's kind of crazy that I. Like seven years ago, when I started Taekwondo, I uh, had no idea I'd be doing this like uh, legitimately. And now, uh, after all these fights I've had, I finally turned pro. And you know, I've always, I was always waiting to. I always wanted to make sure I was ready and not jump start it. It's like, cause uh, I'm not doing this for money. Obviously, I'm a fighter. Ain't no fighter doing for money. Uh, I do it because I enjoy it, and I uh, wanted to try to make a career out of this and go far. So never wanted to jump the gun. So. It feels good to be a pro now, and that, uh, that shit I can. I don't know. It feels good. It feels good to be a pro. <laughs> uh, nice. It's, it's, I can tell people now, and they ask, "What do you do for a living?" I I don't have to say MMA fighter and make a workaround. I can just say I'm a pro fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are a professional. You yeah. uh, you have officially gotten paid for it. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience. Uh, you know, making your pro debut at Rage in the Cage in in Lawton at that Coliseum. Uh, it was the first time I fought in Laden. I like the venue. I liked that the whole bleachers and whatnot, and uh, the hotel stay was nice. I appreciated that. <laughs> uh, I'm, sh- I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to. Let's see. You wanted the whole fight breakdown, everything, or y'all want to build it? Yeah, that? yeah. Give it, give us your whole thoughts, man. This is your time. <clears throat> uh, I knew this. Uh, I expected him to grapple because uh, obviously everyone sees me as a striker. So uh, I knew he was going to try to take me down. And uh, after, because he doesn't have a long uh, amateur career. And I saw that most of his fights, he took the guy down within the first 30 seconds to a minute. So it was my goal to just 
not really engage off the bat in striking. My goal is just kind of take my time and see what he did. And uh, as soon as I started punching, he went for the takedown, which I was prepared for. Uh, I was actually expecting to go to the ground, uh, but I was able to stay standing, which was better for me. And uh, you know, I just started working my elbows. But I was I was prepared to grapple. But <laughs> and and grapple you did. You hit that uh, that crucifix the uh, uh, on uh, on Cody just like you did with the uh, you know Austin. Um, but <laughs> I, I'm I'm trying to get the shot. I I don't know who has it. I think your brother Sage might have it. But you also cheesed at your brother too. Again, <laughs> yeah. So the Austin McCourty fight, I put him in a crucifix. I looked up at my brother stage on the camera, smiled, and I was put Cody in the crucifix. And I was like, "Fuck, I gotta look at stage again." <laughs> so I looked back at my brother, and I was like, "Where's he at? There he is. I gotta do it one more time." It was like for like one second, two seconds, yeah. maybe. But I was like, "I gotta do it again," just because when am I ever gonna like two fights in a row and I get his crucifix again? I was like, uh, two in a row, I have to. That's that's just too funny." Yeah. Now you're expected to do it every fight. Every yeah. time. Well, when, yeah. I, when uh, at training, I do that all the time. I'll put someone in the crucifix, and then I'll smile at the nearest person I can. It's like a joke I've been doing ever since McCourty fight. And so it's, it was trained into me to crucifix and smile at someone. So it's my signature now, I guess. Could, could, you, hear, could you hear the chants in the crowd? Yeah, I, I, going at it? yeah I can hear them. Uh you know, it's like a mixture. Sometimes I hear them, so then it, uh, hear my coaches, you know, but it's like 50 50. I hear about 50% like, of everything. It seemed like they were so loud that night, both chanting cheese and then warship, cheese and then, and I was standing or behind Tom, Cody's coach, and I couldn't hear what Tom was saying. So I didn't know if y'all could hear, if you could hear your coaches when they were yelling at you or not. And I, I was directly behind Tom yeah. at our table and couldn't hear what he was saying. <laughs> I was like, oh, my goodness, this is so loud. Yeah, I love it. I love that. But I, I was able to hear my coaches, and uh, I did things I was doing was, like, directly, like a JD said kick, and then I threw a kick, and I missed, like, right at the beginning. And then uh, different things you were saying, like elbows and whatnot. I was, I was hearing what he was saying. So it's pretty cool. It's cool when you get to – you can actually hear and do things they say. It's pretty awesome, but no doubt the cheese legion showed up <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I love it. And I, I think I love what your dad was saying when he was, uh, you know, selling those tickets online. He said, "Listen, he's only going to have one pro debut. Yeah, you better be <laughs> here to watch it." And man, it was it worth every penny. And uh, uh, you, you definitely uh, showed up and showed out on that one. So tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, I, I was telling uh, telling James you know how how much you've been chomping at the bit to use those elbows in an mma fight tell me a little bit about about your 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 desire for those elbow strikes i know you've been wanting to do it so i've had uh, five tie fights four of which i could use elbows in and i so i've had four tie fights and every those four tie fights i had elbows that's i was using them like crazy i pretty much won every fight significantly mm -hmm. off these elbows and then I have to watch every time I compete, every time I watch fights on TV, I watch people never use elbows. And it makes me mad. I'm like, really? You're on top of somebody and you're throwing punches. <laughs> you yeah. elbow them, man. Elbow's way harder. And so I was like, I can't wait. I was like, once I go pro, I'm using elbows. And finally I got the show. I was like, oh, I wasn't talking crap. I'm really going to use elbows, but I didn't get the chance. Like, man, and I got – You use them things. effectively. These things are brittle. But these Do you things, still have that <laughs> bruise on your elbow? Oh man, it's gone away quite a bit. I took a picture of it uh okay. right afterwards, but you can oh, kind of see it. But, yeah. Uh, man, it's a lot better than having a hurt knuckles, though. I'll tell you that, because yeah. I can still, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. You don't need an elbow for anything, so <laughs> now, uh, you gotta tell your grandpa hi for me. I got had had a beer with him at, at uh Red Dirt. And uh awesome. in the back when y'all were getting ready to walk out, he was like, You gotta remember get him on the next show like, <laughs> definitely and it was cool hanging out with you and your dad the night after weigh-ins when we were all getting to joke around with keegan and mm -hmm. and uh no not a lot of people heard that that little yeah. joke about keegan but uh yeah there there was it was nice hanging out with y'all y'all are y'all are cool people but we were against you just because we yeah. managed <laughs> cody but but you're we've always liked you you know yeah. it, it was it was just a matchup it's over now 
we can go back to being Zevin fans. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, I even made a bet with Starla's daughter because she, oh, yes. like she was telling me. Fan. <laughs> and she was like, every chance she got, she's like, your guy's losing. Your guy's going to lose. Oh, I, I heard about it at, at the end of the night because she was there bragging about it too. <laughs> she, she was actually talking to me before I went out to fight about the bet y'all had. Yeah, <laughs> I, had to, I had to give her a quarter. And she, she, and she made me give it to her when I was getting ready to leave. She got all mad. And I was like, okay, so I got her quarter for her, but. Yeah, she was your one of your biggest fans. Like that's funny. Yeah, I I love the support and uh, I love like uh, we sold shirts for the fight and it was super cool and they sold out instantly. I had sixty chi shirts made and uh, they all sold out instantly. Heck like yeah. I got them, I think the week before the fight or a week of, who knows? And I was like, I gotta get some more made. So anyone out there that wants a, some chi shirts, <laughs> message me. But uh, right it was really cool. I, I think a, I want one. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm a cheese fan regardless. The food and the fighter now. Oh, See, yeah. That, that's now my opposite joke. I know, you know, rest in peace to meatloaf, but my joke used to be, man, I, I never really liked meatloaf, the food or the fighter, but it's opposite <laughs> with you. I, I like that's the funny. cheese and the, the, the food and the fighter. Well, you don't yeah. like meatloaf? I, I didn't like meatloaf as a singer back in the day. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I didn't really like his songs, but, uh, you know, other than that, it was all right. You know, re rest in peace, to, you know, yeah. positive thoughts and prayers <laughs> and the memory of, of meatloaf and his family, but you know but uh so what what's on the agenda for for uh zevin hunt now man uh i'm trying to decide uh of course i'm gonna fight again you know but uh i was trying to decide uh because i like to do stupid challenges and do things uh i was trying to decide if i wanted to try for a triathlon or try for uh something like that there's a world record i'm i've been saying i'm gonna beat if y'all didn't know there's a world record i'm gonna beat one of these days which one? <laughs> the burpee world record 12 hour burpee world record i've looked at it that. and i'm gonna beat that i've uh i've done 2000 in a at a day so far i've done thousands just for fun with my buddies and it's like we're gonna i'm gonna break that world what's, record what's the world record on it uh it's 5212 hours oh and so i'm gonna I beat get that tired doing 10 so i gotta Holy try to decide but I might just probably have another fight before I break the world record. Who knows? But I'm going to break that one day. So. If you do it, you got to film it. Oh, yeah. I'd, uh, I, was, I have some ideas on how to go about doing it all. But uh, Okay. Awesome. Well, we, we'd be happy to watch that. I, I, I don't know if I want to do a 12-hour broadcast, but I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely uh, highlight that for you for sure. But what's up? super next on my agenda is I got some teammates uh, fighting. I got a – Chase King, who fought for Rage a couple times, he's going to be fighting again. I think uh, I forgot what he said a couple months from now. And then I got a, another teammate who's going to be making his debut, Austin Bowie, and I'm excited okay. for him. We'll be getting these guys ready, and I can't wait for them to fight. I think it's going to be real good. That's awesome. That is awesome. Is that on Rage or who, who's that for? Uh, I think we're going to get try to get Austin Bowie on Rage and Chase. We're going to try to get him Rage 2 or MCL. I'm not 100% sure, though. Gotcha. Right on. Right on. Well, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're proud of you, brother. I, I can't st uh, stress that nearly enough. Um, yeah, it's just it, it's been a phenomenal ride. Uh, like we said uh, in your introduction, uh, the night you fought, you know, you've been fighting with Rage in the Cage since, you know, RITC 56. So 30 Rage in the Cages later, you you make your pro debut on that card, and it's just become a home for you. Uh, you know, what has your experience been on the longevity of Rage in the Cage? Uh, I love Rage in the Cage. And, uh, like, I just – I love everybody, all the people, and they've always treated me well, but they've treated my family well. Like, my grandpa and dad walk in and piss everybody off, and y'all treat them super well, you know. They come in and – you know, y'all know exactly what I mean. I don't think if you don't know, you will know. <laughs> yeah. If, if you don't it. know the, you know, the, the hunts, you, you, you haven't dealt with them enough. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Mike treats them well. Summer hates us, but she loves us at the same time. And, uh, <laughs> so I just love, it's like, you know, it's a family and y'all helped me out ever since I started. So, you know, I really appreciate rage and I'm glad it keeps going and I'm glad to see all the things stemming from them. You know, I love these podcasts and that there's just so much happening and, it's really cool. Absolutely. 
we're, we're trying to, you know, get you guys as much media coverage as possible and, and you know, really put you on a, as big of a platform as we can. Because, I mean, there's a lot of fight promotions out there that don't even do, you know, half the stuff. They don't even, you know, uh, stream their shows. You know, like, the yeah, only way you're going to hear awesome. about it. Yeah, you, the only way you're going to hear about it is, that, you know, if somebody takes a, a rogue video from their phone or something, you know, on a certain match. Yeah. You know, there's, you know, several of them that do that. And I, I want to make sure that, you know, you guys can, you know, have a televised fight, uh, you know, get your name out there and just, you know, build your career and portfolio one step at a time. And I think you've got such a bright future. You got the personality, you got the look, you got, uh, you know, the, the, obviously the fight skills. Um, you, you've got a great temperament and the whole, the whole nine. So I think the, the sky is going to be the limit for you. Um, can't stress that enough, man. I appreciate it. Uh, how, I had a question. What did y'all think about the, the cheese it's throwing to the audience? Yeah, I, I thought like that it. was hilarious. <laughs> I, I didn't get it to see brilliant. it until the video. Until that was the a, video. That was the last second idea. It was funny. Oh, That's like, hey, what I, li- I like how you this? bought off the referee with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony would see us once. He was like, oh, here, here you go. He's like, he, he, he was so hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> poor, poor Anthony, man. Uh, he, he showed up kind of late. Uh, I saw today. your, I saw what you, uh, you chanted him in. That was so funny. Yeah, it, it was actually kind of also funny if you guys watch it on Fight TV. Uh, as we're doing the chant, uh, you can hear Caleb Nutty uh, on commentary. He goes, uh, he's looking for a shot of a video shot of him coming in. He goes, wait, if we could only just get a, there it is. There's the money shot. I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> like, that's Caleb, funny. that's. That's, what a way to articulate that, man. That's another thing I love about Rage of the Cage. I love uh, having the commentators. It's so funny. I, yeah. I love it. It was great. But, yeah, like the, the weird thing about Anthony, uh, the, the reason why he was late, Lawton cops are crazy. Uh, they were pulling yeah. over everybody left and right. They got him. They got Justin Miller, one of the fighters, I think. Dang. And, uh, yeah, they were just Fox. pulling him over trying to get to the event. <laughs> so That's they were making funny. their money for sure. Oh, but, yeah. <clears throat> Well, brother, we certainly appreciate your time. Uh, you got any, uh, you know, sponsors you want to give a shout out to? I know you. I know you took some time after your fight to, you know, sp- you know, thank a bunch of people, but give yeah. you another opportunity for uh, for the, all that. Of course, I want to give a huge shout out to Moppin. Uh, not only for giving me a hoodie to wear all the time that's super comfortable, but uh, Moppin, uh, he's helped me out so much. Uh, he's he's been there for a while. He's super super good guy. He's helped my family out, putting roofs on their house. He uh, helped my grandparents out a couple years back. And he helps me tremendous, uh, paying for my fees and helping me be able to train wh- how and where I do. And uh, Smoothie King's a new sponsor for this fight, and uh, Smoothie King and Edmund specifically, the one off Broadway and uh, one uh, one next to that one. So mm-hmm. uh, Broadway uh, and second, yeah, thirty third, thirty third, yeah. And so those Smoothie Kings up there, they've been supporting me and helping me out. And uh, so you should definitely go up there. I've been going up there like probably three times, four times a week after training, get him. I uh, want to give a shout out to my teammate and uh, sponsor, Frank, who's uh, Yosuke, by, who's fought for Rage in the Cage, Yosuke. He uh, has his own company, Frank. He's the one that designed my shirt and helped me order him and get him ready for this fight. Uh, huge shout out to Fresh Harvest, who's been supporting me and coming and buying tables for my fights for a while now. And uh, they're a big group, good group of people. And uh, shout out to my gyms who helped train me, New Limits Academy, American Elite, and The Forge, who, you know, I, <laughs> I learned the crucifix and learned all my good knowledge from him, So <laughs> Awesome. Well, brother, we certainly appreciate your time, and thank you again, and congratulations on, on such a stellar performance and, and making your pro debut. I am looking forward to watching your career skyrocket from here, brother. I appreciate you. Much love to the Hunt family, Terry, Sue, yeah. Jeff, all of you. Grandpa, uh, you know, I don't know his name, but Terry. Yeah. I, I just hey, mentioned him. He was cool. He was so cool. <laughs> yeah, they got, they're all pretty cool people. I, I enjoy you know having conversations Jeff, with them. Go ahead. Jeff was cool too. I got to say that I seen him pop in back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He bounced and then came back and yeah. <laughs> oh, oh Jeff, Jeff, Jeff will definitely uh, you know you know get your gears going too but oh, yeah. he's, he's, such a, he, he's fun I, I i love talking to them and you know as far as i'm concerned you know that it's it's just all rage family you know yeah. they're, they're one and the same so uh like i said congratulations brother and uh hey there's jeff 
<laughs> Speak of the devil. <laughs> How'd he get there? How'd he get there? Just popped right in. He's uh he's my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, always you entertained then. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, hey, brother, we, we certainly appreciate you. Thanks for taking time to uh to talk with us about your experience at Raging the Cage at 86. And uh, I hope to have you on uh the talk for the wall for your next shows, man. Yeah, anytime. You know, even, even if they're not for rage, just you know, hop on. Let's let's promote them. Get oh, as yeah. many eyes on the prize as we can. Anytime. All right, brother. Take care. I'll see you guys. Well, guys, that was uh, Zevin Hunt. Cheese make, made his pro debut. Come out victorious. You got to turn your phone the other way, James. I know, I, I'm, long I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to. I guess you can't comment. I was going to tell somebody said he said hi. So I was going to say hi back. But I'll, I'll type it in there for you. Hold up. We can't can't do that. Or I can't do that. There you go. I'll, I'll, I'll just put it in the comments for you. You know, uh, the best way to uh, respond to comments is through the video. You can just talk to them. Yeah, watch I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, that was, that was a, a real fun fight. Uh, up next, we're going to have uh, Tyson Southern, Swisher Sweet, that, Lawton's own from the Shady 580. Uh, I got to say, that, he, that that was really hard to, to do because I do like Zevin. And our guy was going against him, so it was hard to, mm-hmm. to you know, because uh, Zevin, I, I've liked him since since we watched him. Or since I it's, first it's, watched him. It's really hard to manage a fighter. Uh, that you know is going to go against another fighter that you're not yeah. just a fan of, but you're also friends with. Um, and Cody but, didn't have any ill will towards him. Cody wanted to no. fight the best to see where he was. He knew Zevin was the best at 170. Mm-hmm. And, you know. Uh, it's it's like what Mike Tyson said uh, in his uh, infamous, uh, you know, I broke my back video. If you listen to the rest of the interview that he had after his, his, his boxing match, uh, he's talking about how, and I'm just going to paraphrase this, uh, you know, how it's it's the most respect you can give a fighter, a fellow fighter, is to fight them. And right. the reason why, especially as a pro, uh, if you if you back out of a fight, if you you know refuse to fight them, you're denying them a paycheck. Win right. or lose, either way, you're divide you're you're denying them a paycheck. So with Cody Gallion and Zevin Hunt, the, it was the most amount of respect they could give each other to fight each other as professionals. Um, right. Win, lose, or draw, they both came out. Both of them made a pro debut. Both of them got their very first ever paycheck as a professional fighter. And now they can put that, you know, in, in their, you know, check that off their list, whatever, of, of you know, life goals. Uh, right. You know, Cody's, you know, Cody got a paycheck and a lesson. You know, yeah. that that's the difference. Um, Zevin, uh, you know, has a bright future. He's going to move on. Uh, we don't know if he's going to go undefeated, be the next Floyd Mayweather, or if he's, uh, uh, going to be, you know, have a couple lessons of his own to learn only time. that. See how much dedication and hard work he puts into, you know, his career. Uh, I, I feel like he's, he's got a hell of a bright future and a great support system behind him to be able to make it successful. So, uh, yeah. Yep. You know, it, it was just a. I think it was a great matchup. I think it was a. Uh, you know, you know, good for both of them. And uh, you know, I think uh, Cody's going to grow from that. I think uh, Zevin's going to grow from this. And and you're only going to see both of these guys get better. Uh, right. They're still young. They're still healthy. They're still uh, vibrant. And you know, it's going to be great. I I can't wait to watch you know what happens. Absolutely. But speaking of young and vibrant. <laughs> Little callback joke. All right, so this is a little Easter egg for those of you who watched the uh, Talk Before the Walk episode with Tyson Southern uh, and and Tevin Lasky. We were talking about age differences and whatnot back then. So whoever's paying attention, I hope you got that little reference. I just explained the joke for you, so it's not funny now. But uh, <laughs> we uh, we got Tyson Swisher Sweet Southern taking his third victory in a row against Tevin Lasky and not only doing so uh, with just a victory in his hometown, but also coming away with our knockout of the night uh, uh, commendation, I guess, from us. And um, yeah, it's a, uh, it, it's pretty awesome, man. Uh, we, we showed that in our highlight video at the opening of this, this video. Um, but let's welcome, uh, Welcome back to the show, Tyson Swisher Sweet Southern. Tyson, how you doing, brother? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, I appreciate your patience and waiting for us this whole time. I know uh, these segments can get long, uh, 
How are you feeling after your fight, brother? Oh, uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good, you know, riding that high. I bet. I bet. Tell us a little bit about your experience at uh, Rage in the Cage '86, man. How did all that uh, go in your, you know, from your point of view? Uh, uh, as far as the fight's concerned, I, I went in a little bit more banged up than I usually do, but it's just you never go in 100. percent But uh, he really was kind of hard to time because he wasn't really throwing much punches at me. It was just single kicks. So I was like, you know, that's kind of weird. You know, you used to, you know, kickboxers usually end with kicks. They don't just throw kicks. So that was kind of weird and a, uh, weird to adapt to. But, uh, uh, yeah, he didn't really have anything for me grappling. I thought maybe when he tripped me those few times, he was going to try to come in and we were going to play the game. But uh, other than that, you know, I, I felt good. Sorry, I'm driving right now. No, no, you're fine. Just be careful while you're doing this interview. We don't want you to – if you could, I hope you pull over or something and, and get somewhere safe. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking at the phone. I'm just driving. Okay, yeah. As long as you're safe, that, that's a, a priority. Because we could always do another interview later. I, your life matters more than this this video does for sure. Um, so – <laughs> I was like, right. he, he say that he hits a big old bump. <laughs> I was like, like well, who who did we run over? Um, <laughs> so tell James us a little Cole. bit. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, a little bit. Uh, what was your game plan going into the fight, and you know, in contrast to what was executed? Um. I was actually, my my coach was telling me to be more patient and let him come to me, but I just, I don't know. I, I just felt like I needed to be more aggressive. And then, so in the third round, I, I tried to back off a little bit and tried to counter, but uh, I just kept on going forward and trying to get at him. You know how it goes sometimes. What was going on through your mind when you landed that uh, that cross punch? <laughs> that wobbled Tevin right before you hit that flying knee? Uh, as soon as I saw him wobble, the instantly flying knee went straight to my brain. And I just went over there and I, and I was talking to myself in my head. I was like, man, he's wobbling all over. I was like, I got to hit this just right. And I sure enough did. Right before I got a full lift, it was already over with. And then I saw him pretty much go, you know, kind of out. So I didn't want to throw any unnecessary strikes on him. You know what I'm saying? I don't got no beef with him or nothing like that. I, I was the one thing that I think that impressed me the most with, with both of y'all is uh, your, your candor and demeanor before the fight. You know, you were both real positive with each other. You both had a good attitude with each other. There's no uh, actual, like, beef with it. You just came in as professionals and, and fought and did your job. Yeah, I mean, really, I'm never like that. It's just the king thing, you know, was personal. So, well, I get it. But get it. y'all as as had a lot of words. I mean, to me, it's just a sport, and I don't have to get angry to to compete in the sport. You know, a lot of people say that they got to get mad or have beef with the person they're going to fight, or they're like, I can't look at them or talk to them. I'm like, shit. Before my last fight, when we at the weigh-ins, I was shared some food with Tony Clanton before the fight. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I have no problems with nobody. It's just a sport to me. Mm -hmm. It's just a fight. Absolutely. But speaking of the uh, the, the King thing, uh, a little bit of that drama kind of spilled over backstage before the event. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit from your perspective what happened there and, and, and how that, that all went down? As far as the security situation? Yeah, I know, I know you mentioned it uh, in your uh, post-fight interview with Kimber, but uh, I figured... Uh, now would be a good time to kind of air your grievances on our show a little bit. Yeah, see, my, my brother Bubba, man, he he's back there. He's not just helping me, man. He helps everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like he he'll be back there messing with four or five people, do it. You know, he just, he's just part of the sport, and he's uh, one of my one of my cornermen. He's always in my corner, and you know, we had that situation where one of these security guards seen him back there from the last uh, incident, and they got him booted out. You know, for no reason. He didn't do nothing wrong. The king wasn't here. Uh, there was no problems. We were just going around doing our jobs. You know, that, that can mess with somebody's head before because I was, you know, kind of pissed off about that. And, you know, I'm like, fuck, there goes one of my cornermen down. 
And then so to my coach Tom was like, bro, no matter what, you got to fight tonight. So just you got to focus on that. And that's what I did. I thought it was uh, very uncouth, uh, for lack of a better term at the moment, because uh, Lord knows, you know, there's a lot of um, frivolous uh, uh, articulations that I could use to describe this situation. Um, I think it was absolutely abhorrent that they ended up picking out Bubba when Bubba was the one who was assaulted by the, the their security officers the last time y'all were there. Yeah, they, they committed a crime yeah. against him and used a what, what should have been a non-lethal weapon in a lethal manner against him that could have potentially ended his life. And yet they're the ones who want to push the issue to, to uh, as if he was the wrongdoer. And, you know, he, he didn't do anything wrong there. They put hands on him illegally and unjustly. Um, and then, you know, they, they pushed the issue again this time as if they, they were keeping a grudge for what seems like no real reason. Um, and, and without the, the overstepping my, my bounds, Summer went to bat. She did everything she, did. she could. She, uh, I saw it. it. It was bad. I... I was texting Bubba after he left and I told him I didn't realize Summer was in our group text, but I was telling him what was being said. And I said, uh, I told him, just run to Walmart and get get a wig, get a beer and sneak back in. And, uh, well, we I, don't want to get like, here, here's the problem I had had with that. I like the joke about it, but, uh, you know, we, we definitely, you know, at no point was Bubba ever actually in le legally no. in the wrong. And, no, you know, no, we, we don't was. want him to come back and get a passing case and things like yeah. that. But, you know, at, at the yeah, same time, back. He was gone. just just to put this into perspective, Bubba McDaniel, he while he was there, he helped make sure the cage was safe and secure for all the fighters. Yep. He helped. uh you know, make sure all the corner pads were secure that there was like, uh, because of that issue with, uh, MCL, uh, uh, the other day or, or a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, Bubba was in there making sure that no metal was poking through all this other stuff, you know, making sure things were helping. He helped out the fighters in the back. He helped out the matchmaker with getting things organized in the back. He helped out with tables. He helped out with all kinds of stuff to make sure the event was coming together as well. So he was wrapping you know, hands when he was kicked out. That's yeah, a, he, he was wrapping hands. Wrapping hands. So and uh, helping not just not just his fighters. He, you know, helping other fighters get their hands wrapped. You know, you he's had a man Dale of the Russell. sport. You know, absolutely. What I mean? He yeah, started yeah. at the Coliseum when he was 19, doing tough mm -hmm. man. Yeah. He's, so he's, that's he's, his home territory, too. Yeah. yeah. That, that's that's his home territory, too. And, and it's heartbreaking to see that, uh, you know, that venue uh, who, in my opinion, uh, wronged him uh, and, and was, was the aggressor in the situation, uh, isn't able to check their own ego and admit fault where they need to. And I mean, at the end of the day, all that really needs to be done is just let bygones be bygones. You know, nobody needs to have any litigation. Nobody needs to have any. It was a bad night that, you know, the, the last time they were in Lawton because of all that issue. But, at, you know, at the end of the day, everybody should just be willing to walk away and just shake hands and be done. And, and just, you know, move forward. You know, it, it's your actions of today that matter. And, and he was cleared. A lot of people don't know. He he was cleared by a detective who's seen mm -hmm. every video. I sent every video there was. He was yeah, there cleared. was no fault from, from Bubba oh, McDaniel in, in any instance. In fact, the detective said the security guard was the aggressor. He was mm -hmm. seeking a fight. And so, uh, you know, that's that's what I didn't understand was why is, why is he being kicked out when he was found not to have done anything but defend himself so that's why i will refuse to use triangle security for any event that i ever do because he's probably one of the dudes that got dropped and he was embarrassed he was actually the one that, that pointed him out was the same guy that tried to hit bubba mcdaniel in the head with a baton as same his back guy. was turned as his back was turned so uh the, you know he, like i was saying earlier using a non-lethal weapon with lethal intent 
Um, I think. Yeah. Was, plus, there was like five of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's he like jumping numbered. somebody. Security's not supposed to jump nobody. I mean, the situation had de-escalated. They're the ones that just started. They pepper sprayed like a whole group of people because they were just. You can Absolutely. see in the videos that they're already shaking their cans before anything even happens. You can just tell they yeah. they and were trying just, to escalate it. It was words, you know. Yeah, it was, uh, it was just words it was, before it was an they argument got involved. That that that's all it was was words, and yeah. it turned. It, into it was it. words up until the security uh, the right. security force forced an escalation to get. Bro, busy. every time I had dealing with the king, this happened. Like he got he caused trouble in front of the security and the cops. And then I, I I got punished. I got my drinks taken. I got take. You know, they had to escort me to the bathroom every time. Like that shit's ridiculous. Like we have a fight. Yeah. Hey, we're going to fight. Don't do this stupid ass shit. And then claim you're a professional. You know what I mean? Like let right. not, let's make money, not fucking go to fucking jail. You know what I'm saying? Well, you seen who the professional was too. You the professional showed up to his fight. You know he. That other guy and I don't, and it's not jail. like I'm only out trying to fight King. I, 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 yeah. I always find the backup. I'm always, I'm trying to fight. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we already knew this bum was going to pull. So Summer was already looking for a possible fill in two weeks before he even went to jail. Well, on a bright note or a, a, a much more positive note, I think you're losing Summer as a friend right now. Because <laughs> apparently she just saw that Texas flag behind you and didn't realize you were a, a, a Longhorns fan over there. <laughs> I really don't you even. Gain, watch you, football, you gained but... a friend in James over here. Yeah. <laughs> Hook them, baby. Yeah, that, I, that, I got the Texas. Ca- I got the Texas blanket on the couch too. Oh, <laughs> rubbing it in. Oh, poor summer. <laughs> I'm from Oklahoma, but I used to live in Texas when I was a teenager, and that, that's when I was used to watch football. And you know, me and Bubba, you know, so I was a Texas fan and. When I came to Oklahoma, uh, I always liked confrontation, and it caused a lot of it, so I just stuck with it. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Summer's like, I'm out. Boomer sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't watch football, so it's all about uh, just fight. I just watch the fight. That's all good. That's all good. Well, brother, we, we certainly appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the time to be on the show with us. Uh, you got anybody you want to give a shout-out to real quick? Uh, man, just my team back at home, man. Uh, I couldn't have done it without them. You know, it's an individual sport, but it takes a team to get you there. It really does. So I just want to give a shout out to everybody at Alpha MMA, all my teammates. I really appreciate them. Awesome. Uh, I think I kind of lost James. His, he probably lost the signal or something or phone went dead. No, he's back. I'll bring him back up here. Boom. There he is. But, uh, you know, we, we really appreciate having you, man. Uh, you know, congratulations on your performance. Uh, like, like we said, you had a knockout of the night or we'll remove you there. And, uh, Not bad. You know, no, it's all good. Uh, like, like we said, you got knockout of the night and I'm hoping one day, uh, I'll be able to get some kind of merchandise or something to give you guys some kind of a prize for the cool <laughs> price for all for these. All so. Uh, man, I, I appreciate you just doing all this stuff, man. I, I remember back in the day when I first started, nobody nobody did all this stuff, man. So we all appreciate y'all, man. Much well, respect. You, you guys are, are, are why we do it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Go ahead, Justin. I, I was just uh, giving frivolities. You got a question. Oh, no. Well, what's next for you? What, when are you looking to get back? Oh, uh, man, you know me, man. If it, the, I know they'll be back here in a couple months, and I'll be back on that card, man. You already know. Sold like over six thousand in tickets this fight. I plan on doing it again, and uh, you know I got a following, man, and uh, people people want to see uh, what I'm going to do next. And I I'm hungry, so I'm gonna eat. I'm trying to eat. Well, Summer cool says Tyson may have a next opponent in talks, so she's got her eyeballs on it. Oh, it was I cool can't wait to next to your that. fans, man. They they get when you go at it, they get at it. it it's it's wild. It's the shady man. We're shady all crazy. 580. We're all crazy over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was it was cool. Oh, speaking of which, uh, speaking of the shady 580, uh, tell us a little bit about your the the rapper that wrapped you out, D Star. Uh, yeah, D Star is a local rapper, Westside Money Gang. Uh, man, super talented dude. Uh, check him out, man. He's got uh, things on YouTube. Uh, uh, lots of videos. Uh. 
Facebook, Instagram. He's got all of that, man. You got to check him out. I think we were going to try to get him on uh, a rap battle that we were having at uh, Canifest 1 uh, back when I was promoting the, uh, the, the Canifest event last year. Um, about, I'm not sure what happened. I, I, I don't think he was able to make it for the rap battle. But I would no, have he, was, he was there. He did perform there. Did he perform? Okay. Yeah, he performed. I was there. so busy. I had uh, I had Queso Bobby managing that for me to kind of uh, arrange everything for us. So uh, yeah, I, I was, was there, one man. Of, I was cornering one of my fighters, one of our fighters from the gym. Right on. Did, well, did man, you have it, a real quick, Justin? Did you have a bet with somebody? Uh, me and Lamont. Well, whenever whenever I was facing the king, we we were. I was like, let's bet. I was like, I bet you I sell more tickets. He's like, let's bet. See who has the best finish. And I was like, I was fighting the king, and I was like, shit, I'll, I'll finish him whenever I want, any way I want. So I was like, I'll take that bet. And then uh, I got switched opponents, and then I went out there and fly and need him, and then I went backstage, and I was like, uh, oh, you got you got a tough one to beat. And uh, yeah. Lamont came back, and uh, but uh, I wasn't tripping. I was like, he, he was like, what? he's like, here's your money. And I was like, nah, man, I ain't even tripping, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like. It, I ain't even tripping. Was I was, it was just it was just really for like the hype for me. You know what I'm saying? I like to put pressure yeah. on myself. So. He was we were watching it with him yeah. in the back, and it you had the guy in a rear naked choke, and Lamont said, Well, looks like this is gonna be easy money right here. And you like <laughs> let go of it and got up. And then right after that was the, the knee and Lamont. Man, my gloves, man, I could not finish. Like my I couldn't get the right grip, but my gloves were like so puffed out i just couldn't finish it right there that's actually something that uh a lot of fighters don't get the opportunity to train with is is the the contrast with not just the gloves on but with your hands wrapped with the gloves on yeah because your your hands are wrapped a lot thicker than like your regular hand wraps that you would wear underneath your gloves during sparring and in regular training and that additional puffiness is is something that uh is a little different uh, yeah, especially when they're prying on it, you know what I mean? Because it gives them a little bit more pry, that puffiness, when they're sticking out a little bit more. It's almost like wearing the seven-ounce gloves. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Tev Tevin was a, a, a tough, well-rounded kid, man. So uh, much respect to him, and shout-out to Lamont, too, man. He's the homie. Oh, Te Tevin will definitely be back for sure. Tevin will definitely be back. So will Lamont as well. But uh, we appreciate your time, brother. Uh, you know, congratulations on that, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what's in the future for you. You got three wins in a row. You're on a you're on a good hot streak, brother. Yes, sir. When you're hot, you're hot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, swish is sweet. Before we leave, I got to get another owl from you. Got to get owl! another. My man, brother. You have a you have a great night, and uh, you know, congratulations again, man. You too, man. Peace out, y'all. Later. Guys, that was uh, Tyson Swisher Sweet Southern uh, talking about his uh, his victory against Tevin Two Feet Lasky at Rage in the Cage '86 uh, this past Saturday. That was a damn good fight, man. It went to the third round. Uh, you know, like I said, it was it was a toss up between him and the Baylor Thompson Joan Edwards. You know, fight of the night and, and knockout of the night. And uh, those, you know, that one. The flying knee, when you when you get a, a game bread style flying knee coming at you, I gotta give I gotta give knockout of the night to that. That's just impressive, yeah. super impressive. But uh, speak, we we got to talk a little bit about Lamont with with him because uh you know he's friends with Tyson. But uh, we're, we're it's a really good segue uh, for our next guest. We got uh coming on next will be Will the franchise Dicky. He is the new Rage in the Cage two hundred five pound. Uh, light heavyweight champion. Uh, he now currently holds four professional titles. Let me uh, let me get my notes out. He is the uh, current uh, MCC light heavyweight champion. He is the current Revolution light heavyweight champion, and he is also the current Bay Area light heavyweight champion. And now he just added the Rage in the Cage uh, light heavyweight championship to his trophy collection. Uh, tough, tough guy. Uh, I, I knew it the first time we talked to him. Uh, I've known it for a long time because I've you know been kind of keeping an eye on this guy. You know, in the as far, you know from a distance because I mean Wisconsin's not you know not real close to us, and I don't really get to see a lot of the the stuff from Iowa and Wisconsin uh, happening. But you know, this guy's got a bright future for sure. Um, obviously, uh, well decorated, uh, especially now. 
Um, very he, he's respectful too. Very respectful. I, I, I've really appreciated his attitude. He's incredibly professional. Uh, he, ha, he had a great look. Everything about him, I you know, I absolutely like. Uh, I, I'm going to be a fan of, of Will Dickey. I think from from you know, for as long as he's fighting, uh, you know, the the people that I can uh, you know kind of support and get to know and get behind early on in their careers a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's not really early in his career. He's 17 and seven uh, right now, but uh, you know, it, it's you know well over 20 something fights. You know, <laughs> like he, he's he's been at it for a while. Plus, you know, obviously his amateur career. But uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty awesome uh, getting to uh, getting to know these guys a little bit more and getting to have them uh, showcased on our our shows like this. Uh, so without further ado, please help me welcome the new Rage in the Cage 205-pound light heavyweight champion, Will, the franchise Dickey. Will, how you doing, brother? Pretty good. How you guys? Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you yes, just sir. fine. Awesome. I, I appreciate you taking the time to come on our show, man. No problem. No problem, you guys. I do whatever you guys ask. You guys are the men. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, how, how, was your, uh, how was your trip home? Was it safe? Everything good? Yeah, everything was good. It was just, uh, man, it was it was just 17 hours, you know. I just never, you know, never traveled that far before, drove, drove that far for a fight. Uh, you know, my man's and I had a long talk about what happened this weekend, and uh, it was it was eye opener. You know, there's a lot of things that go into driving that you don't really think of, especially when you're cutting weight the whole way down there. So, but right. uh, man, you guys, you guys are the men down there. I love fighting in Oklahoma, boy. You guys, I swear, the farther I go south, the bigger MMA is, and I love you guys down there. It, it, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome for sure. And I think you were able to come on to a, a really good uh, Rage in the Cage card. Uh, it was a, you know, a, a pretty good crowd in a, in a Coliseum, good venue. Um, you know, and obviously you guys were a marquee main event for sure. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience, man. What was it like coming down there? And obviously, you know, you had a long road trip, the cutting weight. What was your experience like with that? And then you know, uh, coming in and, and getting your hotel room and weigh-ins and all that stuff. Let, walk us through through your process and your perspective. Well, you know, like you said, man, I've been at this a long time, and I just want to give a shout-out to Summer. I told her straight up, like, she's very professional. She's she, she, she's modest as hell. She's like, I didn't do anything, but little as, little as she knows, she did a lot. I didn't have to worry about no hotels, nothing. She had everything set up for me. All I had to do was show up, and, and, and that's huge. You know what I mean? I fought on shows coming up where they didn't even have hotel rooms and uh so shout out to summer man you guys run a great show down there but uh it was pretty much what what what, what i expected you know um lamont's the man man like all respect to him man like he should not hold his head low at all man he, he's the man like he was so freaking respectful and uh a guy of his stature he could be he could be anything he wanted to besides being respectful but he was just so respectful so like real knows real man like if he's listening man he you know i told him man like you know, get in, do whatever you got to do, man. You want to run it back, we run it back because he's a tough dude, man. You know what I mean? You know, everybody has an off night, and and I just I, I don't think it was the best him. You know, it, it wasn't the best me, but I also think it wasn't the best him. So, like, shout out to Lamont, man. He, he he the man, man. Most respect to him. So, absolutely. Uh, you know, what was your game plan going into the fight, and uh, how is that in contrast to how the fight actually went? Uh, you know. You know, I've been at this a long time. You know, I, I don't really have a game plan. That's why that's why I laid myself a freestyle fighter. But I guess I, I would have liked to stand up a little bit more. Um, you know, I'm 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 my biggest critic, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, man. Like, not taking nothing away from Lamont because he's the man, but man, I fought like shit. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I was not myself. I don't I don't know what it was. I'm not making excuses. It was a good win, but uh, you know, I took a lot from this. Uh, it was just it was just weird. Like, maybe it was just. How long I was, you know, the build up to the fight, the drive, the the, the, the cutting went. I don't know what it was, but it, I didn't feel right going out to the cage. It was almost like my head was in a cloud, if, if that makes sense. Like I strung myself out so much, you know, coming in you guys' is, you know, home state and like, you know, you got it, it's huge down there, you know, up up here in the north, you know, we we got big promotions and stuff like that. But man, the energy in that crowd, man, and like you, you I mean the <laughs> The back blue locker room was juking. Every, you know, it's just, I, I, I don't know. It's just, I felt like I fought thirty percent. Not taking anything away from Lamont, but I fought like shit, man. And 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 it's, it's, you know, I had to talk with my management, and uh, it sucks because I worked hard, but uh, I just hope in the future you guys can see a better, you know, franchise. You know what I mean? Because you guys deserve that. You know what I mean? Well, being in Lawton, Oklahoma, I can almost see you getting a contact high just from showing up. 
Yeah. <laughs> My wife, I popped my wife on that one. She, <laughs> she's over there laughing. <laughs> no, but uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm glad you had a good time there. Uh, you know, obviously the energy is just palpable. You know, and that's the way it is at, at any Rage in the Cage event. I know. I think that was your first Rage event uh, to come back yes, or come to. Don't don't. Uh, it, it gets it gets worse. It gets worse. Uh, there's we've had uh, some events where we've had riots. We've had, uh, you know, some events where, you know, everybody is just like so into this that like the, the building is almost shaking. Uh, mm-hmm. So like there, there's an energy to a Rage in the Cage event that you're not going to find on uh, almost any other event. Uh, it, it's a, you know, one of those grassroots style uh, uh, promotions that, you know, started from from scratch. Uh, you know, Mike Crawford's been doing this, like, like we said, it's Rage in the Cage 86. So he's been doing it, you know, 86 plus shows. Before that, it was Cage Rage. Before that, it was, you know, a couple other things. He's also done, uh, you know, pro wrestling uh, promotions as well. And I think they've done boxing events. They do the roll in the cages. So they've got like almost, you know, well over 100 events under their belt. And just the following that Rage in the Cage has, man, it's going to be great. And now that you're one of the uh, the reigning champions, you're going to have to experience that again. Uh, it's going to be going to be pretty fun. We're we're going to be happy Airplane to have you back. Next time. Don't drive. Yeah, yeah, it was out. That's a sucky drive. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, you, know, you you you, you got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? It's just, right. you know, what I mean, like, I I loved it. The whole experience was amazing. Like my management says. You know, she, she, at NCMGT, she's one of the realists. She'll tell me exactly, you know, how it is. She'll never sugarcoat it. But we took a lot of positives out of this. Obviously, the win. But, uh, you know, knowing that I can drive 17-plus hours cutting weight, knowing that I can come into other, you know, territory. You know, What was your process with at, that? Excuse me? What was your process in cutting weight while driving? Oh, man, it was just – I mean, I, 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 I didn't sweat nothing, but – it, it, it was a tough wake up for me. I'm not going to lie. Like, um, I really kind of, I wanted, even though it didn't look like I had any condition, well, I didn't have any conditioning, but I did have conditioning to believe it or not. But I, I, I don't know. My weight just got a hold uh, out of the way with me. I don't know if it's because my legs got bigger because I was putting on so many miles, like just trying to psych myself up, you know, running stairs, you know, you know, I'm a big boy. So like, <clears throat> I don't know. It was just, it was just a tough weight cut for me. Um, and then I, I weigh in at 204. You know what I mean? Like I've never, I haven't felt that shitty during a weight cut since my amateur career. You know what I mean? It was like I was an amateur and not taking anything away from Lamont. He's a man, but I know my potential. I know how I feel when I'm on point. And when I was out there, it was like I almost psyched myself out. Like my head wasn't right. And I truly understand the old terminology, the calm before storm, getting your head right before activities because I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I was I was walking out there. I was hoping somebody hit me in the head with a bottle so I didn't have to fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, wow. Like, what, yeah. So like, it, it really was it was calm. tough in the back. Yeah, it but looked really, really calm. It, it it was it it was just a weird thing because usually I have everything down. I got I got the you know the crawling skin. I'm ready to go. But like, man, I I, I don't know what it was, but you know. It's just you guys got thirty, maybe forty percent of what I, I actually can do, and uh, I'm actually, I'm actually just real lucky I pulled out that win because uh, it could have went either way, you know. So you came, you came to a casino town with a poker face. That's what what James <laughs> is trying to tell you. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, in, in the yeah. back, there was there was talk going on with one guy, and and Mont kind of shut that down and was like, "Hey, he the man, dude." Respect. And, I mean, and, that just real knows real. That that's his little brother, though. So I understand the whole hype process, but. You know, and you oh, you were ahead. real cool about it. You you know you you were like, hey, he's got a good height, man. You know, yeah, and, man. and you took it in stride, and I thought that was cool. I I was like, whoa, this could have went south real quick. Well, it- yeah, yeah. You know, you first of all, you never want to match aggression with aggression. I, I understand what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like that's his little brother. He hyping him up and stuff like that. But you know, what I mean, we we about five minutes out from you know seeing seeing who's the best, but. The same, the same with Lamont, man. Lamont's so damn respectful, man. That dude's real as hell, man. He could, he could have been like, you no know, f franchise, f that, falling into that stuff. Look, look lame as hell, but he's just, he shut that down right away. Like, no, bro, that's right. some real shit. So, like, yeah. respect to him. He came up to me after the win, like twice, and and I, I know I'm gonna probably chop this quote up, but he's like, I've held this for a while, man. Just respect it, and I really respected what he said to me for that. You know, respect this title, man. And and I and I know that wasn't the best Lamont. I know because 
man, Lamont the man. And I, I told him, go, go get in shape, man. We'll run this one back. Get, get in shape, man. You know what I mean? Because I don't know what his situation outside. I'm not going to, you know, but I just felt like I didn't get the best, best him. You know what I mean? So right. shout out to him, man. I appreciate it. I would, I would him. love to see that ran back too. Cause I think, uh, yeah. you know, getting both of you at the top of your abilities and the top of your conditioning and the top of, of you know, the, the best that you can be, I think would be a, a, a main event any day of the week, uh, title or no title. You know what I mean? He, he, uh, he a sneaky jits guy, man. That that's a big boy that can and he athletic as hell. He he got two arm bar. I, before I could even boom, he's like damn. I mean, shout out to him, man. Just yeah, you, I don't you guys you are both off, consummate man. professionals, and I think that's one thing I I really admire about both of you. For sure. Uh, you know, it was one of my first time. It was it, it was actually my first time getting to watch you uh, perform personally. You know, in person, and uh, you know, getting to to you know converse with you before the fight, after the fight, things like that. Man, I've got nothing but respect for you, a hundred percent. You know, uh, like Summer says, you're you know you're going to be welcome back anytime. Obviously, you're the the reigning champion. You got to come back anyway. But uh, you know, I just you know I, I'm I'm happy that uh, you know the the title is going to be in good hands. Uh, you know, I, I think you uh, you're going to hold it with with uh, poise and the respect that like like Lamont said that the uh, the title deserves. Because uh, you know a title is only as good as a person holding it, right? Absolutely. It, it, it's funny because I, I haven't really even looked at it. I was so down on myself. You know what I mean? Like, I, I felt like I didn't even deserve it. Not to be, like, down on myself like that, but I'm, I'm going to pick it up this I'm gonna pick it up this training camp. And, and if Summer's listening, get a hold of my management, man, because we're ready to come back right away, man. I got I got, I got, to, I got, I got to wipe this one off because uh, I'm trying to get to the next level. And, uh, yeah, to, to anybody that doesn't really know fighting, it, it, it looked dominant, but to anybody that knows fighting – Man, it wasn't the next level performance, so I actually went backwards. So, it, but uh, all respect to, to, to you all, guy in the promotion. I love you guys. You guys were the man, man. All respects you guys. I can understand why this show has been around 100 some shows. So, yeah, it, it's a, it's going to be fun, man. And I think they're going to be around for 100 more plus, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, I, I got the gig where uh, my company runs a production for them, so I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this, man. It, it's such an honor to get to, you know, talk to you guys. Uh, we do these shows, you know, independently, the Talk for the Walk, Aftermath, things like that. So, uh, a matter of fact, tomorrow night uh, we're going to have uh, uh, Tommy Britton, uh, who you were supposed to be fighting, uh, who and Afton Cunningham. Uh, they're going to be fighting in Wisconsin. Alton Cunningham. Alton Cunningham. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, stud. He's stud. You you may be more familiar with this. Uh, I'm I don't know how to pronounce the uh, the company they're fighting for. It's that Ogichata or whatever it is. Do you know the the name of that? Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, man, you you said better not good. It's a it's a it's a native <laughs> one. I fought there twice. Yeah, I fought there. Chris 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 Hicks. Uh, Chris Hicks. Uh, he 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 runs that and uh, shout oh. out to him. He gave me two fights on there. But uh, yeah, it's oh, yeah, man. Say it again, you probably say it even better. But you said right it pretty on. much on point. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I would probably have to try to read it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to get a hold of him. Uh, if you if you happen to have his number, would you like, if, of course, you know, with his permission, uh, text it to me uh, so of I course. can ask him how to pronounce it because I'd like to put their show over as much as we can and and kind of get some eyes on their product as well because we got an Oklahoma guy going up there fighting a Wis uh, a Wisconsin guy, uh, you know. You know, it's a hometown guy versus one of our out of towners now. So, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to see see that again. Absolutely. So you said Alton and uh, Alton and uh, Britain Tommy, are going to be fighting? Tommy Britton. Yeah, they're going to be fighting oh, in nice. April. I think it was April nice. 9th. Uh, we're going to be hyping up that show tomorrow night on the Talk Before the Walk uh, on our Tuesday show, uh, six o'clock. So if you want to tune in for that, we'll we'll be yeah, live absolutely. on YouTube with them. And uh, you get to hear Tommy Britton talking. He's coming up to your territory, man. So you get to kind of scout him a little bit. Uh, you, yeah, I man, know you guys are eventually going to Ugly gonna ass, run. loopy ass over and right, man. He's he a tough dude, though. He <laughs> tough dude. You got ugly ass, loopy ass over and right. <laughs> they are effective, though. It's weird. It, it, it's yeah, gonna, isn't it? Like, it's striking. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not technical. It's not like, you know, traditionally technical striking. But he's got his own technique. And it's, it's, it's uh, doing a lot of damage. Yeah, absolutely. I said, shout out, shout out to Britain, man. Hey, tell him, tell him, tell him. Hey, I, I'd love to get that fight back, though. Let let's let's run that. You know what I mean? After after yeah. him and Col Alton. Hey, so, uh, he'll he'll be on the show tomorrow. Get in the comments section. Call him out. Absolutely. I said, <laughs> you know, I'm not good with calling people out because like I'm I'm all well, about you, respect, you can do but, it respectfully, but you know, man, he's, so, like, hey, he's so tough though. He's so you could call man. dibs on next. Yeah, it is, but he's so tough though. You know, it's nothing but respect, man. He's he's a yeah. tough dude, man. Like nobody can seem to put him away, and. uh 
like I said, like you'd like to think you wouldn't get hit with that looping little thing, but it, it works for him. So, oh, Shout absolutely. And you know what, what's crazy about that matchup? I don't mean to be talking about another fight. You know, when we're you know in respect to your your victory here, oh, but no you know it, it's also your territory. So I'm getting a little bit of your perspective with it too. You know, Alton uh, Cunningham has a 100 you know finish rate too. Yeah, you, you know, know. you're a monster, dude. You're a monster. I, him yeah. and I are gonna be seeing each other down the line. I'm sure one day. You know, so I mean? you know, 100 finish rate on the fights that he's won, and uh, he's fighting a guy that's never been finished. So that's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. The only time Tommy Britton has ever lost the fight is by decision. Yep. Yeah. He tough, tough as nails, man. Tough and and, and I always have the opinion, and this is you know just the way I see things because I'm I'm a dork like this. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever you lose a decision, you don't lose a fight; you lose an opinion. Because mm -hmm. you know when it goes to decision, you know the fight's not really over. Just the time limit went up. If there was no time limit, y'all still be fighting, you know? Absolutely. And I, I believe that's why he's still relevant, too. You know what I mean? Tommy, he's, he's got a few losses, but that's why he's still relevant, man. Like, anybody that knows Tommy, man, like, better put the work in, boy, because that boy tough as hell, man. Tough as hell. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, brother, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Is there uh, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Friends, family, teammates, sponsors, all that jazz? Yeah. Get, yeah, get your money's worth. First of all, just shout out to Summer, man. Appreciate it. Uh, get a hold of my management, man. I want to run. I want to run something back real soon, sooner than later. Um, to you guys for having me. Conquer the cage, man. Uh, hold that belt with the utmost respect. Um, to my sponsor, man, sponsor or to my management, NCMGT. Like I said, I'll make you proud. I, I hear everything she tells me. She, she, she's the best. Um, and then my sponsors, uh, Mom's Basement, top podcast, uh, Calf Kick Sports, uh, Ice Blog. Uh, ran by Kimmy, Mikey Magnum, and his band, the CBD department. Thank you guys, been so good to me. Uh, mostly MMA, the Barber Social, the Corner Sport for making all my apparel, and then uh, Red Schaefer's MMA and uh, Coach B and uh, Timmy, my corner man. And to my uh, three brothers that always come to every fight, doesn't matter where it is, it could be in Antarctica and they'll show up. Uh, Robert Flores, John Sissel, Joey, and Craig, man, thank you so much for making a drive. Man, it was mental and world to me. And to my girlfriend, obviously, man. She's the backbone of all this. Yeah, you better, so you get she's the backbone of all this. Yeah. Oh no, she she was there uh, right there beside him getting pictures and everything. Yes. Yep. Yeah. She, she loves those pictures, boy. <laughs> I, I I think I said uh what kind of said to y'all after the fight. I'm like, I bet she put up with a lot of shit just to get right there. She she she's the backbone, man. I could not do it without her. I know that sounds cliche, awesome. but she she uh she's the best, man. I'm 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 lucky to have her, so I love her. I know this firsthand behind every great man is a is a phenomenal woman. Hey, you know, she just said that. That's funny. You just said that, man. You got that's funny. You're absolutely right. Oh, I'm saying that my wife's over here grinning at me. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's I'm, funny I'm, I'm getting brownie like points right now. But they're absolutely right. They're absolutely right, man. You guys are all the foundation of this. You know what I mean? We could be as tough as we want, but if 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 the home life and the wife ain't backing us, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's the silent yes or no. So absolutely. Know. Because at the end of the day, that's why we do all this stuff. It's our families, our our, our tribe, our people. You know, uh, you know, we're trying to build a future for for them, and to get that support and that you know that that uh, that lifting from from inside, from right there. That's that's what matters the most. The it most does, doesn't it, man? It's just like it makes everything just the yes or no, man. Just knowing that they back you, it just makes you want to work. Mm. thousand times harder so yeah you'll, you'll work that. yourself straight to death if it meant a better future for you and your family Absolutely. you know so I, I totally get that uh so hey man uh you know we're, we're looking forward to, to i know it's a little bit too soon to find out what's next for you because there's not a lot of talks on the table just yet but uh i know you got a bright future in this business and i'm Thank looking you, forward to seeing what, what's coming from you uh i'm hoping we can get get you back in oklahoma pretty soon man i i, I look forward to watching you compete uh you're a talented guy and uh mm -hmm. you're very entertaining very respectful and and uh you know i, I you you do a lot of really cool stuff with our media, and I'm I'm happy to promote you as much as we can. So, uh, you know, thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. I I, I wish you a uh, against you, man. Man, man, you guys, you guys are, you guys are, you guys are so professional down there. I'm telling you, right? You guys are, you guys are saying thank you to me, but I should be saying thank you to you. You guys are, you guys are, so, you guys are the man. Thank you so much. Well, the, the thanks are mutual both ways. I mean, uh, it, it was a, a a good experience. Uh, you know, it didn't go in you know, in, in the local favor, but you know, it. it it doesn't he'll always be back. have to do that. Yeah, I he'll mean, be it, back, man. He's a man. Lamont, Lamont is a very resilient man. He'll be he'll be back. He'll be back Listen, stronger than ever. You tell him. You tell him, to, you. you tell him to get in shape. You tell him to get in shape because I know that wasn't the best Lamont. I'll run it back any day of the week, man. I, I owe that to him, man. He I owe that to him. Respect to him, man. 
I, I, I have no doubt that he uh, he wants that belt back, and uh, he's going to uh, work his ass off to try to get it back too. Awesome. So I think you guys are going to uh, be able to put on a, a, a you know a, a Stafford Dix two or Dicky two. Uh, would that be dope? Would that be dope? That sounds dope. Yeah, we can we can figure out how to promote that as as best we can because I think that's that's money in the bank right there for everybody. Uh, you know, you guys are are marquee fighters. You guys are both, uh, you know, you're you're on the 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 precipice of that next level of reaching that world stage. And I think this is a a, a good highlight showcase for you guys to be able to to get there. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm proud of both of y'all. Y'all y'all did great. Um, you put on one hell of a performance, and uh, you know. Like like we said, Lamont's going to be back. We 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 love Lamont to death. Uh, he's he's just going to work you know really hard to get back and and do what he's got to do and, and make the improvements he needs to make and and you know I can't wait to see what's next from you too, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, hey, uh, you have a, a a great rest of your your night. Uh, say hi to the family for us. You know you know we know they're all happy you came back with another belt and and uh, yeah. Thanks for. Yeah, I'll thanks see you guys sooner than later, though. I'll see you guys sooner than later, you guys. Thank you so much. Sounds sure, good, brother. All right, guys, there you had it. The uh, the new hashtag and new uh, Rage in the Cage 205 pound light heavyweight champion, Will the Franchise Dickey, on our show Aftermath. James, it's been a hell of a show, brother. What do you think so far? Man, uh, it was good. It was. I good. think it's going yeah. pretty smooth. I mean, a little you quicker know, than most of our Aftermath shows. In, to talk about him, he, he was so respectful in the back like his whole team was his coach i mean they in the back you know were yeah where, where there's nothing. no cameras there's no no yeah where no, no limelight yeah yeah it, they were just so cool you know he told lamont good luck right before they walked out uh mm -hmm. his coaches i mean just everybody you know and and when it took a lot of guts for both him and lamont to take that fight because you know it, it, that was a tough fight for both of them and a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people will look for a softer fight. And uh, again, shout out to Summer. She don't let people do that on her show. And so we got two of the top level 205ers locking horns. And, and hopefully we see that again. Cause, and, and I like him. He, he, is, he is awesome. Absolutely. Uh, real quick before we uh, before we get any further, I want to kind of give a shout out to uh, – we, we kind of got wrapped up in, in these interviews uh, – Shout out to our other sponsor, Oklahoma Boxing and Combat Sports. Uh, for your boxing training, go see Oklahoma Boxing and Combat Sports at 5001 North Rockwell Avenue in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, for uh, they, they have kickboxing there with uh, Josh Morgan. They got boxing training with uh, Coach Maurice, the bounty hunter, Williams. He is a state champion as well for Oklahoma. Uh, they've got, uh, you know, jujitsu with Diego Pichilingue there. Uh, and uh, every Wednesday, uh, they have at 7 p.m. Spotlight Sparring, which will be airing this Wednesday on our Fast Productions YouTube channel as well. Uh, you can come in and spar underneath the bright lights uh, just like you would be in a regular fight and get that real fight feel while you're sparring with some uh, some teammates and, and other fighters from all over the Oklahoma City Metro. So go check out Oklahoma Boxing and Combat Sports located at 5001 North Rockwell Avenue. And thank you guys again for your support with the talk before the walk and aftermath. Um, yeah, man. We got a, a hell of a show coming up tomorrow night. Uh, this is going to be one of those weird weeks where we have a twofer. As a, as a, uh, I can't remember which comedian used to say that. I think it might have been Bill Murray or something like that. Uh, you know, it's a twofer. No, it was um, John Candy. John Candy used to say it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we, we got the talk before the walk tomorrow. We're going to have Tommy Britton and Alton Cunningham uh, on to talk about their fight Uh tomorrow night so uh, or to talk about their fight in april uh i think uh you were trying to tell me you're going to try to get uh martin solano on here because he's got a boxing event taka uh, taka yeah taka taka Lord. coming on uh, i'd love to get he him may, on our show he may yeah. have three boxing events two weeks apart from each other one well, hopefully two we can later, get him on the, the show so yeah, yeah, hopefully we can get him on the show and talk about it all because i'd love to hear what he has to say and 
and you know hear his experience because he's gone through quite a bit of uh training and you know sponsorships and all this stuff uh for a lot of opponents just to back out on him. 11 uh, in a row 11 opponents in a row and he's he's what two and oh or four and oh what what is he Four, four and 0, I think he had two in Mexico that they didn't count for whatever reason, and then two I, th I think it has something to do with their commissioning. I don't think that uh, yeah. the United States recognizes the sanctioning there. Right. Well, so I think, he, uh, he his official sanctioning. Box rec or box rec has him as two and zero. So right. It kind of reminds me of uh, when when uh, Oklahoma had uh, the C three fights and they were on tribal land. They didn't have any kind of a commissioning body, so they were unsanctioned fights. But they, you know, they they did them you know respectfully in a professional manner. But there was no real governing body to sanction it. So a lot of those fights were were not counted on records, but they were still, uh, uh, you know, there were still fights. And uh, what what sucked about those is because they were unsanctioned officially. Uh, the fighters <clears throat> that fought on those cards would get suspended for like three to six months after fighting yeah. for them. And it just, it was kind of a crap deal. Um, same thing recently happened with uh, the bare knuckle fighting championships. Uh, I was just talking to art Parker, art, art, the shark Parker, uh bare knuckle fighter. Uh, when we were at a uh, rage of the cage, he was cornering uh, one of the people from the outsiders combat club. Uh, he, uh, he got suspended and they've been yeah. trying to get him another bare knuckle fight to, you know, since January think, and uh, you know, it was February, March, they, they keep rescheduling it, keep rescheduling it. And now I think he may be fighting in May. And if that's the case, uh, as soon as, as soon as he signs that contract, we're going to get Art the shark Parker on here to talk about his bare knuckle fight. I think, uh, Chris Barnes and Sterling Lentz were both suspended for that same card. up in Really? Montana. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. that was it too. So like, hopefully those suspensions get lifted uh, if they're not lifted already very soon. So those guys can get back to their, uh, their respected work and their craft. Um, I know Art Parker is chomping at the bit to get back in the ring and, and, you know, showcase uh, not only his fighting skills, but also his, uh, his, he's got a great personality, man. He's just, he's yeah. so entertaining. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of Art Parker uh, and, and a lot of those guys over there. Uh, he, he's, he's the, uh, I'm not sure what, what he, I think he says he's the grandmaster of Vietnamese street karate or something like that. And it's just, uh, I think, he? uh, he is a heavyweight. He okay. fought, uh, he fought Tony Lopez, uh, at rage in the cage. I want to say 75, uh, or not 75. It wasn't 70. It was 65, something like that. 65, 60, something hmm. like that. But uh, he fought Tony Lopez in a, uh, a pro kickboxing match. And uh, I think, um, I, I want to say Tony broke his arm when he blocked a kick from Tony. And he still fought the whole time, finished the fight. Wow. And I think he, he just lost the decision or something. But he's he's a tough, tough guy. Speaking of bare knuckle, we're in the talks. Rome Lindsay will be uh, making his bare knuckle debut here pretty soon. Okay, we're going to have to get him on the show. A hush hush thing because we didn't want it to, uh, you know, jinx ourselves. But uh, you brought well, up the bare cat's knuckle. out of the bag I'm, now, James. I figured Damn. I might as well say it now. Uh, yeah, right. he's looking at making his uh, bare knuckle, and if that falls through. Um, there's another, I can't say it because Summer will punch me in the face, but uh, there's another one. I'll tell you after the show um, that we're, we're looking at. Off uh, the I record. Also found, I also found something off the record that I'm going to bring to light uh, about the great Summer. Uh, she doesn't like socks. <laughs> and uh, Okay. Yeah, I, I won't won't tell the story i don't want to embarrass her but uh yeah she does not like socks so summer i know you're watching because you're commenting it's a little get back for yelling at me in the back saturday night i don't know yeah, summer does not like socks. right now at the moment so <laughs> i'm one live viewer anyway they're just listening to us banter she may have already given up on us yeah <laughs> i wouldn't but, blame her uh, if she did yeah uh yeah, she she doesn't like socks and so 
but anyways, well, it was a good show. That, that's that's about as random as as we could get, man. I mean, uh, you know, snorkel. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. yeah. All right. That yeah. Like I don't even know why that was even in your head. <laughs> well, I seen her comment. I wanted to say something earlier, but I could. I, I waited. I waited. Oh she my yelled, god! She yelled at it, me, and I was gonna pay her back. And I know she'll watch least, tomorrow, so I'll say it tomorrow too. At least you waited to the end, you know, towards the end of the show, and people are like, "Yeah, forget the rest of this. All the fighters are gone. It's just these yeah. two yahoos <laughs> just talking." Yeah. So, uh, a little bit of a you know, that's aftermath. So you know, there's a couple of events that happened this weekend. Uh, George Mosvidal uh, versus uh, Colby Covington happened. <laughs> And you know, Colby Covington ended up winning by decision. Uh, there's a lot of people who uh, did not expect that to happen. As far as uh, a lot of people, he was very much heavily favored odds wise to win the fight, but for the fight to go to decision, I think is is the I, the the shock I think, factor. I think if you are a hardcore fan, you knew exactly how that fight was going to go. Uh, I expected Colby to win by decision and dominate like he did. Okay. Did, I didn't. I didn't expect him to get dropped twice, uh, but he, you know, he recovers well. He's got a, a hard chin. That's why I didn't think Masvidal could knock him out. I think Masvidal should have rested a little more. Uh, he's coming off a nasty knockout from Usman. Uh, but I'll tell you what did made me smile a lot was Bryce Mitchell. Bryce winning. Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, I, that kid is such a good kid. Um, Greg Hardy got knocked out again. Uh, well, not knocked out, TKO'd. Uh, um, what's the Texan? He's slipping my mind. Uh, he made his welterweight debut, maybe. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I didn't do my research. I just brought he, the subject he talks, up like, randomly. He talks and talks and talks. Uh, Ah, I can't remember his name now. Anyways, he, I, I, I think I think my my thing with the uh, Colby Covington and and George, Jorge Masvidal uh, fight, I knew that Colby Covington could win a decision. That wasn't a question. Uh, my thing though was I didn't know if Jorge Masvidal could go to decision with him with Jorge's fighting style because Jorge was one of those you know you got to finish the fight type of fighters. You right. know he he's one of those you know blood or nothing type of guys and. Uh, you know, game bread, you know, like the game bread fighting championships. But uh, I was highly impressed with, with Jorge Masvidal's uh, uh, indomitable fortitude in that fight to not only, you know, bring the fight the whole time, like he did, uh, you know, to go all, you know, go the distance with him. Um, you know, I think that, that really impressed me with, with Jorge Masvidal, I think he's he's getting to another level as well. You know, I you know, think I, I think he's taking these fights incredibly seriously, and especially this this fight with uh, with Colby. I think if Colby wouldn't have pressured him like he did, Kobe, Kobe suffocated him. Oh yeah, Co- Kobe Colby's Colby's up. a beast. Colby is is a he will smother you with with just nothing but relentless offense. That guy's got a gas tank. Uh, yeah. You know, like like a freaking Mazda Miata with the, you know, the, the power and, and striking of a howitzer, you know, it's, he, he's, he's a phenomenal yeah. athlete. Uh, he's a phenomenal fighter. Uh, you know, the, the, the only, you know, criticism I think anybody can make about him is his personality. Um, you know, and that's, that's, you know, touch and go depending on how you lean with that. Um, he, he learned, he learned, he took pro wrestling into MMA and he, he's a consummate heel. He's a consummate heel, but you know, there, there's contradicting points of view on that as well. I've been hearing a lot of things. I listened to uh, Jimmy Smith's unlocking the cage as well, where they talk uh, to, you know, some of his teammates and stuff like that. Uh, you know, people like Eves Edwards comments that they've known him behind the scenes and, and things like that. And he's, he's the same jackass there as he is, uh, you know, like b- behind closed doors as he is in public. And, you know, I think that's kind of where he rubs a lot of people wrong. See, and if he's taken, like, you know, the, the kayfabe heel thing that far just for the sake of, of, of keeping up the character, you know, more power to him. That's that's his shtick. But, you know, there, there comes a point to where, you know, you, the, the character of the man is going to matter more than the fight record. 
Yeah, but I, I, most people say that he is, that's not him. Most people say even Jorge was like. I've heard a lot him. of people that's, question it. I've heard a lot of people question it. Um, but I haven't, I haven't heard anybody confirm that that, that wasn't him. So I, really I, think... I, I can't speak on it myself. So I, I, I can, I, the, the one thing I can speak on is I know he's a phenomenal athlete. He's a phenomenal martial yeah. artist. Uh, he's a phenomenal fighter. Uh, he's got the talent of, you know, of a thousand fucking fighters. Um, you know, he, he's, he's a, a world champion quality, uh, skill wise fighter. Um, you know, when, yeah, he, when he, he finally wins that big one, you know, then you know he'll he'll obviously get a lot of eyes on him, but uh, you know he 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 markets himself. But I mean, right or wrong, you you're, know you're watching. It's just like Daniel Cormier. In any other lifetime, he would be the light heavyweight world champion, and nobody would ever you know. But he lives in an era where John Jones lived, mm -hmm. and that's the one guy. Usman, Kobe just can't get past Usman, and. Uh, uh, it, he, any other wrestler, Jorge would have knocked out. Uh, Kobe just has that chin and gas tank to just keep pressure. And now well, I would question, uh, Jorge being in that main event, uh, like title fight picture as well. You know, because I mean, he of course, you know, you get Jorge with you know highlight reel knockouts like against Ben Askren, but there is absolutely no debate that you know the the caliber of fighter Ben Askren is versus the caliber of fighter Colby Covington is. Right. Um, you know, obviously, you know, if you get those guys in a fight, you know, Colby versus Ben Askren, you know, that's going to be a, a a highlight reel, uh, you know, promotion leading up to the event because of the mouth on both of them, but uh, you know, and the skill wise. Colby would would I think would destroy I, him. I, don't, I mean, Ben Askren was was a a world champion. All right, absolutely. NCAA, NCAA absolutely, his wrestling was, was unparalleled. However, I still don't think that his wrestling is better than Colby's. And I'm not a Colby Covington I mean, fan. Yeah, you never you never know until they go. That's why they say you know they they fight. If we went on paper, Bryce Mitchell would have lost. Uh, there's been a lot of people would have lost, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know what, what, uh, speaking of Ben Askren, you know what fight I'd, I'd like to see him come, uh, fight in next. Uh, I'd like to get him in a rematch with Robbie Lawler. I think that no, fight ended Robbie like crap. Knock him out. Well, we, we say that, but they fought before and, uh, you know, Ben put him in a headlock and the referee was a dumbass and thought that Robbie was unconscious. Yeah. But and, any, the refs nowadays, would have called that when Robbie was pounding his head into the. You know. I agree. I agree. And um, I want to see that fight ran back. I want to see uh, Robbie get that one back personally. Uh, yeah. Or uh, I want to see Ben Askren win it definitively, you know, yeah. uh, get a legitimate win. I don't feel like that was a legitimate win for Ben Askren. I think yeah. that uh, he rode the high off of that and got cocky and, you know, obviously lost his next bout. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I want to see that. That that's what I wish the uh, UFC would would rematch. Um, I'm not a big fan of rematches either. You know, there, there's some that need to rematch, and there's some that don't. But uh, right, yeah. Uh, AEW had a pay per view this past weekend. Revolution. Hangman Adam Page retained his uh, AEW World Championship against Adam Old Baby. Did you watch any of that? No, I heard uh, CM Punk won a dog CM collar match. Punk, yeah, CM Punk won a dog collar match against uh, MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Uh, that was an interesting finish. Uh, Wardlow, uh, uh, MJF's lackey, a bodyguard, whatever, came out. And uh, they've been doing this thing where Wardlow has been uh, sneaking uh, the the diamond ring to, uh, to MJF uh, so he can, you know, cheat and hit somebody with the, the the ring right well he wardlow came out and all of a sudden couldn't find the diamond ring and uh then uh next thing you know both both of the uh cm punk and mjf were down all of a sudden he found the diamond ring and just placed it on the ring didn't hand it to anybody and cm punk was able to reach for it grab the diamond ring and took the shot and knocked out uh mjf with it and got 
uh, got his win back. So it was kind of 50-50 booking when it comes to the story between MJF and, and CM Punk. But uh, I'm liking where they're going. I like how they paid homage to the old Rowdy Piper versus Greg the Hammer Valentine match from way back in the day, you know, before some of our viewers were even born. Right. Um, you know, it was a good. I, I love how when CM Punk is uh, is in these matches, uh, his last match that he had with, uh, oh God, I can't even remember who it was. Um, oh God, it was the last feud he had. Uh, they they paid homage to Bret Hart. Um, yeah. It was it was a good it was a good match there. This one here, they're paying homage to uh, legends Roddy Piper, Greg the Hammer Valentine. I love how they're able to you know do these callbacks and kind of reintroduce old styles to the new audience like right. that um it was, it, it was a lot of really good matches uh i think one of the my favorites was eddie kingston versus chris jericho uh, chris jericho was able to put over eddie kingston uh that was a good one eddie kingston i don't know if you're familiar with him but if you ever watch any of his promos it's like you you, you know the, what kayfabe is you know what what uh you know the wrestling's you know not real thing yeah. when, when he's talking uh you're almost convinced he doesn't know it's not real <laughs> you know like like he, right. he's he, you know he's a professional he does it but like when he 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 says such with such uh, says everything with such words and such uh you know conviction that you almost feel like you know is he in on it does he know that this isn't a real fight like that's not gonna be right. a fight to the death you know <laughs> like uh -huh. I'm so impressed with him, and every time that uh, you know he's in there, I'm I'm hoping that uh, you know they they really put him in some good storylines, and I think right. uh, I'd have to give one of the matches of the night to um, John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. These two guys, uh, they they had a storyline where uh, to die. that's okay. I don't know you why my charger's on. not my charger's okay. not working. I don't know what the okay. Heck is. I've had it plugged well, I'll, in. I'll try to make this quick, and we can wrap up our show pretty soon. But uh, the, the storyline between Brian Danielson and John Moxley, uh, the uh, you know, the, Brian Danielson's trying to team up with John Moxley, and Moxley says, "I'm not going to team with you until we bleed together," and that's why they had that match. And obviously, there was blood. There was just, I mean, them kicking the shit out of each other, you know, booting each other in the head, you know, wrist lock for for throw, for punch, for everything that just went absolutely insane. And I think it ended in like a, uh, a one of those you know schoolboy roll ups or whatever, and like it's like they weren't done fighting at the end of it. The match is over, but they they kept trying to swing on each other, kept trying to fight. The referees trying to break them up. And who made their debut at AEW? None other than William Regal. And a little bit of backstory for those that aren't familiar: William Regal trained both of those guys back in back in the day. Uh, he worked very closely to both of their careers, so it's really awesome to pay homage to William Regal in that way to get him involved. And William Regal is kind of breaking him up, and you know these two guys are still trying to go at it. And William Regal just hauls off and slaps the shit out of John Moxley, and Moxley just stops. And Brian Danielson's look at him, kind of getting cocky or whatever. And then all of a sudden, William Regal comes over, and slaps the shit out of Brian Danielson, and he says, "I taught both of you better than this." And they had them shake hands, and now you know I think we're going to get the team of John Moxley and uh, Brian Danielson if they can bring William Regal in that mix and kind of bring those guys together and get some young guys under them and have a stable of of those guys. That's going to be fun to watch. They're going to be crazy and 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 just entertaining, entertaining. Cool. But uh, yeah, brother, I uh, I appreciate your time uh, hanging out with us, man. I will see yes, you again sir. tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're going to have a pretty fun show. I'm going to make sure we produce some cool stuff uh, for uh, Tommy and for, for Alton. And uh, we'll talk. I think we're going to talk about the Kane Velasquez situation tomorrow, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been uh, purposefully withholding uh, comments on social media, on our shows, on everything like that to kind of. I wanted to make sure that we got some more details of the situation before I commented. Uh, I'm not going to say anything here. So you guys can tune in tomorrow cliffhanger uh, and find out what our opinions are of the situation. Uh, obviously we're not going to speak out too highly or too far on it because of, you know, it's an ongoing legal matter and we got to let thing, let the uh, dust settle with that before we can make any final judgment calls on, you know, from a media perspective, but uh, we'll, we can give some opinions on, you know, you know, our, our, well, we're going to give our opinions on the situation one way or the other. Um, 
so tune in for that tomorrow, 6 p.m. Tuesday, uh, March 8th, uh, for the talk before the walk right here on YouTube as well. Uh, James, El Papi Chulo, I had fun talking with you this weekend. It was great seeing you in person in Oklahoma City or in, in yes, Lawton, sir. Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, we, we still got to go have a have a beer and a steak together and, uh, you know, just kind of hang out, you know, like that as well. So. I'm hoping uh, the next go around we get to do that and we'll carve out some time and, and just have some fun. Yes, sir. But uh, yeah, man, Absolutely. you have a, have a safe trip uh, wh wherever you head. And, I'm uh, headed to Houston. I'm in Dallas right now, headed to okay. Houston. All right. Well, you have a safe trip to Houston, brother. Uh, yeah. You know, safe travels, Godspeed. And, uh, you know, we'll see you again tomorrow night, brother. All right, man. God bless, Catch man. You later. Yes, sir. All right, guys, that has been an, the episode of Aftermath for Rage in the Cage 86 and all the events this weekend. Uh, we briefly touched over those. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, please give us a, a like on this video. Share this video to your friends and family, to everybody you can. Uh, you know, Leave a comment in the, the comment section. Let us know what you thought of the video. Hell, let us know what we can improve and everything else. We're, we're always happy to have uh, constructive criticism. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, we will see you tomorrow night for the Talk Before the Walk with Tommy Britton and Alton Cunningham. Good night, everybody.